Thank you. I'm in Washington today to meet with my economic team about trade policy and major tax cuts and reform. We are renegotiating trade deals and making them good for the American worker. And it's about time. Our economy is now strong. The stock market continues to hit record highs. Unemployment is at a 16-year low. And businesses are more optimistic than ever before. Companies are moving back to the United States and bringing many thousands of jobs with them. We have already created over one million jobs since I took office. We will be discussing economic issues in greater detail later this afternoon. But based on the events that took place over the weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia, I would like to provide the nation with an update on the ongoing federal response to the horrific attack and violence that was witnessed by everyone. I just met with FBI Director Christopher Wray and Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The Department of Justice has opened a civil rights investigation into the deadly car attack that killed one innocent American and wounded 20 others. To anyone who acted criminally in this weekend's racist violence, you will be held fully accountable. Justice will be delivered. As I said on Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And as I have said many times before, no matter the color of our skin, we all live under the same laws. We all salute the same great flag. And we are all made by the same Almighty God. We must love each other, show affection for each other, and unite together in condemnation of hatred, bigotry, and violence. We must rediscover the bonds of love and loyalty that bring us together as Americans. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. We are a nation founded on the truth that all of us are created equal. We are equal in the eyes of our Creator. We are equal under the law. And we are equal under our Constitution. Those who spread violence in the name of bigotry strike at the very core of America. Two days ago, a young American woman, Heather Hare, was tragically killed. Her death fills us with grief, and we send her family our thoughts our prayers, and our love. We also mourn the two Virginia State Troopers who died in service to their community, their commonwealth, and their country. Troopers Jay Cullen and Burke Bates exemplify the very best of America, and our hearts go out to their families, their friends, and every member of American law enforcement. These three fallen Americans embody the goodness and decency of our nation. In times such as these, America has always shown its true character, responding to hate with love, division with unity, and violence with an unwavering resolve for justice. As a candidate, I promise to restore law and order to our country and our federal law enforcement agencies are following through on that pledge. We will spare no resource in fighting so that every American child can grow up free from violence and fear. We will defend and protect the sacred rights of all Americans, and we will work together so that every citizen in this blessed land is free to follow their dreams in their hearts and to express the love and joy in their souls. Thank you. God bless you. 
and God bless America. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Ambassador Lighthizer, Secretary Mnuchin, Secretary Ross, Congressman Issa, and distinguished guests. Thank you all for being here. This is a very important moment. We're going to be fulfilling another campaign promise by taking firm steps to ensure that we protect the intellectual property of American companies and, very importantly, of American workers. The theft of intellectual property by foreign countries cost our nation millions of jobs and billions and billions of dollars each and every year. For too long, this wealth has been drained from our country while Washington has done nothing. They have never done anything about it. But Washington will turn a blind eye no longer. Today, I'm directing the United States Trade Representative to examine China's policies, practices, and actions with regard to the forced transfers of American technology and the theft of American intellectual property. As President of the United States, it's my duty and responsibility to protect the American workers, technology, and industry from unfair and abusive actions. We will stand up to any country that unlawfully forces American companies to transfer their valuable technology as a condition of market access. We will combat the counterfeiting and piracy that destroys American jobs. We will enforce the rules of fair and reciprocal trade that form the foundation of responsible commerce. And we will protect forgotten Americans who have been left behind by a global trade system that has failed to look, and I mean look, out for their interests. They have not been looking out at all. This is what I promised to do as a candidate for this office, and this is what I am doing right now as President. Ambassador Lighthizer, you are empowered to consider all available options at your disposal. We will safeguard the copyrights, patents, trademarks, trade secrets, and other intellectual property that is so vital to our security and to our prosperity. We will uphold our values. We will defend our workers. And we will protect the innovations, creations, and inventions that power our magnificent country. Thank you, and God bless America. Thank you all very much. It's a very big move. Thank you. This is just the beginning. I want to tell you that. This is just the beginning. Where's Raytheon? Raytheon, congratulations. You're very good for that. We had a press conference. We just had a press conference. Can we ask you some more questions then, sir? It doesn't bother me at all, but you know, I like real news, not fake news. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, on behalf of President Trump and here with other NATO allies, allow me to thank you for your leadership. And allow me to congratulate you and the people of Montenegro once again for successfully acceding to NATO. My friends, Montenegro's accession proves that NATO's open door remains open. And so will it always be for those European countries that share our values, contribute to the common defense, and strive to achieve security, prosperity, and freedom for their people. And to all the leaders gathered here, let me assure you, 
Under President Donald Trump, the United States will continue to stand with you as you pursue your European future together. Whether your future is in NATO, the European Union, or both, the United States supports you because either path will strengthen Europe. And as President Trump said during his historic trip to Poland, in his words, quote, a strong Europe is a blessing to the West and to the world. And by bringing the Adriatic ever closer to the Atlantic, we can assure a brighter future not only for the Western Balkans, but for the West itself. Under President Trump, the policy of the United States will always be to put the security and prosperity of America first. But as the President has made clear, and I hope as my presence here today demonstrates, America first does not mean America alone. The bond between the United States and Europe has been, is now, and always will be essential. For we are stronger together than we will ever be apart. During his visit to Poland last month, President Trump challenged all our allies and partners in Europe, and really all who cherish freedom, to renew, in his words, our commitment of will to confront the shared challenges that we face. And that commitment begins with you and the actions that you, the leaders of this region, take in the days and years ahead. This is a time of great opportunity for each of your countries. Virtually every state in the Western Balkans has recently held free and fair national elections with the participation of all political parties and with a result that reflected the will of your people. This is a historic accomplishment, and President Trump and I congratulate each of you. You belong to a new generation of Balkan leaders, and this is a historic moment for progress in the Western Balkans. And so I urge you with great respect to make the most of this moment. You have the opportunity to settle grievances of the past and bring people of different backgrounds and beliefs together in pursuit of the common good. You can strengthen your economies and open the pathway to prosperity for your